SUVs are the ongoing trend in the market. So every manufacturer has jumped on the bandwagon. So much so that even Mercedes has taken its smallest offering, the A-Class, and turned it into a mini crossover, like the GLA. This GLA in particular is the 220D 4MATIC and I am here to find out does it really make sense to buy a compact luxury SUV with a 4 wheel drive system? Now let's be clear, the SUVs that are making the numbers in the market aren't really SUVs. They are more hatchbacks with uh, race suspension and body cladding to look a bit more off-roady. Same is the case with the GLA. Uh, the chassis is shared with the CLA and the A limousine. Both are sedans. And we are here to actually test its off-roadiness. So what we are going to do is there's a rally track outside uh, of where we are and I think it's time for some four-wheel drive mayhem. Now let's be honest, the GLA isn't at all meant to be doing any hardcore off-roading like the Land, Cru Land Rover Defender or the Land Cruiser or even its single letter sibling, the real G. However, it is very comfortable in this position uh, which is a soft roading, gravel riding sort of environment uh, because I mean, come on, it's it's on AMG rims. Who's going to take this rock crawling or anything? And first impressions, just like any other of its competitors that can be comparable like the X1 X Drive or even the Q3, uh, all of them are predominantly front wheel drive, four wheel drive systems. So what uh, this is, is exactly the same. It is a predominantly front wheel drive system. But let's be honest, you're going to be in traffic on the street most of the time. So uh, there is nothing wrong with having a four wheel drive system with that is biased to the front wheels. Which is why let's go on road and talk a little bit more. Now, when you think about the crossover formula, it does make quite a lot of sense. Small dimensions so you can weave through traffic and it's tall enough for you to overcome terrain change, you can overcome uh, elevation change and the best thing is that you can fit the entire village if it could fit it and it still wouldn't graze any sort of bump. That's because of the 180 millimeters of ground clearance in the GLA. When it comes up to the engine, the 2 liter 4 pot with 188 bhp and 400 newton meters of torque do a beautiful job at uh, being able to overtake with a lot of punchy torque. It's delivered very soon in the rev range and it feels nice and punchy. The GLA boasts of a 70 liter uh, tank, which if you consider it's 2 litre diesel, you can uh, imagine that it can do quite a lot of long distances at cruising speeds because it's a huge tank and it's a 2 litre diesel. In terms of a road trip machine, it would be great because the seats are super comfortable and the interior is just money. You've got polished uh, steel everywhere, uh, really nice leather and red, red stitching all over which make a really nice place and the MBUX uh, system of course is flawless. It's super easy to use, it's very intuitive and it's a very relaxing place to be if you ask me. But there are a few shortcomings to the driving experience. The 8-speed torque converter gearbox isn't the most smooth at times. The gearbox just doesn't seem to understand what is going on and that results in a lot of shuddering and jerking. Basically, the gearbox is the only shortcoming to what is a great driving experience. The suspension is super compliant over bad patches of road and in fact it's so good that after a point, 
you just stop slowing down over speed breakers and other minor potholes. The GLA220D 4MATIC in theory should be more diesel thirsty than its front wheel drive brother, but even we were able to get some amazing numbers like 14 km per litre on the dash without caring too much about maintaining the fuel economy. The tech in the GLA is something that you would really be impressed by if you get the hang of it. The MBUX system is definitely grown on me. The driver and passenger have basically the same amount of control over the infotainment system. I can control the entire infotainment system through my left hand controls. The MBUX itself has Mercedes Me over the air updates which means it's constantly updating itself and if you get the Mercedes Me app you get 43 new features like remote control, engine start, uh, live traffic information and Alexa and Google integration. As usual the customizations of the UI are amazing. You get three themes which are classic, sports and progressive. There are 64 different types of colors you can choose from in your ambient light and you get active seat kinetics which can support uh, orthopedic changes in the seat and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Moreover, Mercedes tries to keep you and the pedestrians on the road safe at the same time. It has something called as an active bonnet which means if you have an accident with a pedestrian, the bonnet's hinges will kind of unhinge themselves and the bonnet itself will reduce the impact of the crash for the pedestrian. Then it gets more geeky features like a low speed crash warning system which is called collision prevention assist which makes sure that you don't have a low speed crash. But again, nothing can be perfect and the one super annoying thing about the MBUX system is with its Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. First off, it is not wireless and secondly, it doesn't occupy the whole screen which means you have two black boxes of nothingness on both sides. A few more things that the GLA boasts about is its increased headroom space in the rear, which is now at an impressive 1037mm. Moreover, the split panoramic sunroof helps decrease that claustrophobia even more and the GLA's rear cabin feels very open and fresh. The GLA's boot space is also quite impressive at 435 liters of space, but the integration of the spare wheel means that most of that space is quite difficult to use. Now the good thing that they have done with the new GLA is that they've made it a bit more muscular and more butch. The previous generation of GLA looked pretty much like a hatchback and didn't resemble an SUV in any form of way. It looked like an afterthought, but this GLA, yes, it's a stretch to call it a proper 4x4 but it does resemble one with its squared off wheel arches, its raised rear and angry DRLs, it definitely has the presence. This particular GLA has been kitted out with the AMG trim line which means you get the fancy AMG rims which are shared with the A35 and GLA35, the sporty seats in the cabin, a more aggressive and flashy front bumper and rear bumper. Although everything you see in this car isn't real, the roof rails on the GLA are practically useless because there is a panoramic sunroof. Then most of the vents of this car don't really do anything but the biggest culprit of this fakery is the fake exhaust tips that Mercedes have made a habit of giving their AMG line models. We beg you Mercedes, please stop this fakery. Now if you're in the market for a compact luxury SUV and you want it to be four wheel drive, you're kind of stuck with this one only because the X1 doesn't come with X drive anymore and the new Q3 isn't out in India yet. So coming back to the original question, does it make sense to buy the GLA220D with a 4MATIC? Well, it totally depends on your usage. I would like to say that 99% of people who will buy a GLA will never even bat an eye towards sandy dunes or muddy trails. The normal GLA220D without a 4MATIC does make quite a lot of sense because essentially, it is the same car without the 4MATIC system. But if you know that your use of your car is going to be rough and you are going to be tackling rough terrains yet you want a compact and comfy car to use in the city, the GLA220D 4MATIC is right up your lane.